This week on The Land Doctors, we head to Fitzhugh, Oklahoma, where we discuss and operate some of the latest and greatest brush management tools that are available. And we also show you how much more safely and enjoyably that you can clear brush with modern equipment than with your granddad's chainsaw. Well, that was easy. This program is sponsored in part by the Oklahoma Energy Resources Board. The OERB is voluntarily funded by Oklahoma's oil and natural gas producers and royalty owners, and their funds are being used for well site restoration and student education all across the state. Since 1993, the OERB has restored more than 13,000 orphaned and abandoned well sites at no cost to landowners or taxpayers, employing Oklahoma contractors all along the way. The OERB is proud to serve the state of Oklahoma. I need the Oklahoma wind to run open through my veins. I need the Indian grass to cut right through these long and lonesome days homeward bound. I'm homeward bound. I hear the scissor tail calling me from the I hear the top water roaring still of the day as the bass enjoy the feast homeward bound. I'm homeward bound. Oh, I recognize that front porch light from a mile away. Welcome to this week's episode of The Land Doctors. I'm Kelly Hurt. And I'm Bill Clark, and welcome to Fitchew, Oklahoma. Bill, what kind of gnarly tree am I standing next to here? This is a black locust, Kelly. Uh, no tree known to man has more thorns than this one, I don't think. And longer thorns. Some of these things are six inches long. They're, they're terrible, absolutely terrible. Well, tell me, I mean, this Fitzhugh is, I mean, this should be tall grass prairie. How did we wind up with these here? You know, about 15 years ago, I met Dr. Terry Bidwell with uh, OSU Extension Rain Specialist. And one of the things that I asked him that very question, and the first answer he gave me was lack of fire. Yeah. And this range over the years would have burned and would have controlled these kind of brush species over time. One reason we have lack of fire is that we now have volunteer fire departments. We have section line roads. And you know, we get a fire, we try to go put it out. Another reason we have lack of fire is our grazing practices have kept us from having the amount of fuel that's needed underneath these trees to go ahead and, when it does burn, to go ahead and clean it up. So lack of fire is a, is a major problem and now it's to the point that we, they're too big to control with fire. So the, our volunteer firefighters are good in protecting structures, but as part of them doing their job, it's causing things like this to that along, grow large. that along with our management practices such as overgrazing. But the real reason that we have these, these thorns here, Dr. Bidwell talked about lack of fire, but it goes back a whole lot further than that actually. Yeah. Adam and Eve ate the fruit that God forbid, forbid them to eat in the garden. Right. And God told Adam at that time that you will, you will, by the sweat of your brow, you'll farm this land and there will be thorns and thistles. And that's where these came from. Prior to that, the garden was perfect. We didn't have these things. So if you really want to blame it on somebody, we'll have to go back to Adam and Eve. Well, I know you've got several pieces of equipment that you want to demonstrate today. So let's go look at them, see what different types there are, and you can tell us how they work. Okay, we're going to start from the basic and go up to the most advanced piece of equipment that we can operate. So. Okay, great. Let's go. All right, Bill, what, is, what are we looking at here? We've got a number of attachments that we're gonna operate on a compact track loader here today, Kelly. And this first one is probably the most basic, and this is known as a stump bucket. And we'll hook this on, and you can see the teeth on the front of there. We can actually grub out trees with this bucket here. 
What are these ser serrations on the side for? Just used to cut roots if you got in under that and you could pull back and when you do that it would actually saw on the roots as it comes back out to cut those and So off. they just catch in there and it pulls yes. them out, snaps yes. them? Made to be pretty durable and rugged. You can imagine if you're trying to pry a tree out that it needs to be. Yeah. So now the the uh, the compact track loader, that's like a skid steer with, with tracks that's on it, basically right? what it is and as you saw in those thorns earlier yeah you know a tired machine's not going to last five minutes out here with these six inch long thorns so yeah you'd be fixing flats all day when you would be out of business in a hurry so basically you're going to have to have a track machine or a solid rubber tired machine to be able to operate in this environment yeah so this thing is very simple heavy duty steel you go up and you just pop the tree out kind of the most basic tool that you could have to do this with of course, you're limited on size. Yeah. Now you could sit there for hours, maybe, and pull out a big tree, but basically you're gonna, you're looking at a small tree that you could pull out in a hurry. Digging implements such as this one are a low-cost alternative. However, they may not be ideal if you don't have much time or if you have a lot of trees that you want to remove. In addition, it's less than ideal for large tree removal. However, if you have a few small trees or have plenty of time to work, you'll find that you're able to completely remove the smaller trees plus the root system. So what is this, Bill? Kelly, this is kind of the next step up. Um, you can see here, this actually hooks on a compact track loader or skid steer just like the other attachment. Yeah. But it has a hydraulic cylinder here there. and there's some saw teeth here in the middle. This actually will open up pull up to the tree, close it back, grabs the trunk, and then you raise up on the machine to just yank the tree out of the ground by the roots. Oh, so it, it doesn't actually saw, it just clamps down those, and you pull it those up. Those saw teeth are just to, to get it a grip, to get it a bite, and you grab a hold and then just pull it up. Naturally, it won't pull up a great big tree, but the smaller trees, uh, you can actually pull them up by the root and get everything. You probably really zip through them. Yep, that, can't you can you? go pretty fast. Now, you gotta pull up each one and do them nearly individually unless they're really close together, but. But yeah, it's a, it's a good solution for small trees. So that's going to get roots and all? It'll, it'll pull all the roots. Of course, you may break a few off. Yeah. In the case of the boat arcs and things, they will continue to, to grow from the root, but you'll get the vast majority of it. So you got your quick connects, you just drive Look into up. the hydraulics of the system, yeah. Yeah. I want to tip it back just a little bit so that you can see those Actually teeth. see the teeth where yeah. they grab the hold of the tree. Yeah. That's pretty mean looking. I like that a lot. That's pretty neat. This is a big, heavy-duty piece of equipment here. What is this thing? Well, this is commonly known as a tree shear. And you can see it's got two large hydraulic cylinders on each side yeah, uh, and a blade on each of the cylinders. And they come together and close and literally clip the tree off at the ground level. Just like a big pair of scissors. It's like a huge, giant pair of scissors. Man, those are some big old hydraulic cylinders. They're massive, they have to be. You can imagine as tough as these trees are, yeah. as hard as the wood is to be able to, to clip that off, it takes something with a lot of hydraulic power. So when it clips, do you pick it up and carry it or does it just fall over? Ideally, you want to, as you clip it and pick up, you'll back up so the tree will fall away from you. Yeah. And then you can actually grab that with that pincher and carry the tree around. Oh, I got you. And it's got this good heavy duty guard here in case something tries to fall back toward you. Invariably too, and as you're getting up to the trees, they're gonna have limbs that are sticking out. This will keep the limbs off of the cab of the machine while you're getting to the tree. What kind of machine do you suggest people run with this equipment? Once again, uh, a compact track loader or a hard rubber, a solid rubber tired skid steer with hydraulic capacity to handle these big rams. Wow. Well, that was easy. That's a pretty slick operation. This thing looks like a gigantic saw, Bill. That's what it is. That's it is, mean looking. It is a saw to cut off trees. Once again, it's, it's a compact track loader attachment. Hooks, skid steer, quick attach. Yep. Hydraulic hose is here to, to operate it. This actually has an electrical plug. This one will hydraulically rotate, and that's used to run a solenoid to make the, the saw head rotate. One, another unique feature of this is that it actually will spray herbicide once you've cut the stump off. So it has a tank on it here, a spray nozzle. Once you cut that off, you can hit a, hit a button there in your compact track loader, put a little spot of herbicide on that trunk. That makes a lot of sense to me because most of these trees, if you cut them down, 
even, unless you get all the roots, they're going to sprout right back up. That that would seem to to be a long-term solution. But now that's going to leave the stump and the roots in the ground, right? It will. This will cut it off at just flush to the ground. In fact, you can actually cut under the ground a little bit. You can dig down into the ground. Yeah. Doesn't hurt the saw that much. Doesn't hurt the those are carbide tip teeth. Um, so it leaves it nice and smooth where you could still mow over it. The stump's going to be there, but you can get over the ground. You won't have to worry about hitting it with your brush. Right. So that's the fastest thing we've seen so far. Look at those big chips come out of it. It's just big old tube. Watch out for the shrapnel. There you go. Wow. Now this thing, what, what am I looking at here, Bill? How's this thing work? Well, this is a tree saw also. It's just a different concept. Heavy duty, massive, you can see. Well, I guess so. Look how large those are. Two giant rams here. And it's a little hard to see here with the grass, yeah. but this, this blade right here actually rotates from one side to the other, has the teeth on it, and it moves slowly across and literally just chews a path through that tree. So it's just back and forth? It's just really back so? and forth. Okay, so, so, so you've got the, the chain on the one and the ram on the other. So it pushes and then it pulls back Absolutely. and forth. Yes. Between so that, that blade just goes back and forth. So you pull up to the tree, that help hold it in place. Yeah. And then as you pull that up to the trunk, this comes back and just literally slices it. Those teeth. It's like a gigantic, heavy duty tree saw. It's, it's the, kind of the same concept as a set of hand lap loppers. Yeah. But it's just got hydraulic power in a massive way to help you do it. That, and I can't even budget. I mean, it's, that's heavy. I think it weighs about 1,900 pounds all total, the wow. machine does. Now, will this thing spray the stump when you're finished? It, it also has an attachment that uh, once you through, just hit a button, has a little 12 volt pump on it as the rest of these do that uh, we'll, you can spray just a little spot of herbicide on the stump and then you'll you'll be rid of it forever. Once again, this cuts off at or below ground level. So when you're through, yeah. you've disturbed very little soil. Um, you can mow over it, whatever it is you need to do over that. And that's one of the keys to this is you're not coming in with a dozer and just demolishing the soil and the grass around it. Right, you're just, you're, you're going in surgical strikes. Exactly. And out what you don't want. Now, what are all these oil fills on this thing for? Uh, this actually has an oil mechanism, and they recommend, this is another thing that's a little unique about this, they recommend using used oil in here to actually oil the mechanism on this. It's not a part of the hydraulic system, yeah. but just to oil the mechanism, uh, you can put waste oil in there to do that with. Well, that's a great use of a waste product. Absolutely. And then, of course, this is here to keep the tree from falling back on you. Yes, use that and also use, use it to push the tree over when you get up there to it. Uh, this one also does a really good job of being able to grab that tree. You can see if you don't bring that ram all the way over, you can actually grab the tree with the saw teeth, yeah. pick it up, carry it around, set it to a pile. The only limitation you have is the ability of your, of your track loader to, to handle the weight and the pressure. And of course, there is a size limitation. Uh, they talk about the size of tree that you can cut. Now, with, with just one swipe of the blade, you know, you can cut probably a six inch tree. Yeah. Just pull up to it and just cut it right off. Yeah. They have cut, uh, There's, we've seen them cut up to 30 inch trees. You have to take several bites at it. Yeah. Move around the tree, take another bite, move around, take another bite, but then it, eventually you'll get it, you'll get it into it. All right, so this is obviously the most advanced piece of equipment we've looked at so far. Lots of moving parts here. This is commonly called a tree mulcher. And literally, you can come up to a tree, Kelly, and with these carbide teeth on this, chew it off, 
and then run over the tree and chew it up into pieces and mulch it to nothing. This is the ultimate if you don't want to leave anything behind. If you don't want to have a pile of trees left behind to come back and burn later, uh, this will to totally turn it to mulch. That's impressive. It's hard to believe that, you know, it could take an entire tree down like that. How large of a tree can it have? Well, literally, it's, it's the only limitation is your time. This, is, this actually is a, a, a 72 inch model, so it's a full six foot across there. So, you know, it's a little far fetched and extreme, but if you wanted to walk up to a five or six foot tall tree, you literally could chew it in two. You mean five or six foot wide? Abs uh, tall, yes, wide. I meant wide in diameter, yes. <laughs> now, that's not practical, and you're not going to do that. Right. But it's not unusual to come up to a 12 or 18 inch tree and chew Right, the chew normal it. size that you'll encounter here in Oklahoma. Right. And you know that's going to take a while. That's still pretty extreme, but normally the trees we're looking at today are six or eight inches in diameter, yeah. and uh, it makes pretty handy work of that. So it runs off hydraulics. Runs off hydraulics. Takes a high, what they call a high flow machine. It takes a lot of hydraulic volume and pressure to run this. Operates at about 33 or 3400 psi. No gears in it. No gears in it. It's all hydraulic driven. That's that's probably a really good thing with the kind of strain that you'd be putting on it. It's. Uh, it's pretty extreme when you see it operate. Are you gonna let me run this thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, when he goes backwards like that, it really does, it doesn't. <laughs> so this looks like a gigantic, heavy-duty mower. What is this thing? Well, it is a mower. It will cut grass, but it'll also cut trees up to seven inches in diameter. And this is what you would call, commonly, a lot of people call a brush hog. Okay. But instead of going on the back of the tractor like you typically see where you've got to run over it with your tractor first right. and then hit it, this is out in front of a compact track loader. Runs off the hydraulics of the machine so better idea is that you chew the tree up first, you run over the brush before you run over it with the tractor. Oh I got you. So it's a lot easier on your equipment. A lot easier on the equipment. Now I want to I want to look at the bottom side of this thing. Let's this is this is what you need. Okay. All right, Bill. I see at least two different things here that interest me. One are these big heavy duty blades, and it looks like we've got more carbide teeth. This is this is unique in that this is what they call an open face cutter, Kelly, yeah. because we are primarily trying to cut trees or brush. Right. And the first thing that's kind of unique is that this this actually opens up to get to the point where these blades can actually cut the tree. So these blades you see have more like an axe yeah. shape to them to literally cut the tree. These are reversible. You can turn these from one side to the other. And then this big disc here is what's commonly known as a stump jumper on a on an old cutter, if you would, if you will. And that also has carbide teeth mounted on the bottom of it. So once you cut that tree off, you set this on top of the stump and literally chew the stump into the ground with these carbide teeth. So you've got it You're flush. You're below ground level again with this. That's amazing. That is one impressive piece of equipment. As you can see, the thickness of the steel and all, it's made for severe service. If I were a tree after this thing attacked me, I would be so discouraged, I'd probably just give up and die anyway. <laughs> so Bill is literally mowing down those trees. Now he's grinding the stump. It's amazing how quickly he can do that. He's doing a little more grinding on the stump. So now he won't have to worry about hitting that with a brush hog later on. It'll be at surface level or lower. Then he can just use the front to push the trees out of his way. Very impressive. So this thing looks just like a big grappler. 
That's what it is. It's commonly known as a brush grapple or a root rake with a grapple on it. And with the exception of the mulcher, where we're going to chew the tree completely up, once we've got them down, then we've got to do something with them. We can't just leave them scattered on our pasture. Right. So typically you would take a grapple like this that would allow you to kind of rake, as you can see with the teeth there, grab these trees, put them in a pile, and come back later after they've dried a little bit and burn them. I wish they'd had this when I was a kid, because that was my job, was to pick, pick up, up all the pick limbs. Up and stuff. Yeah, pick and up the roots sticks. and stuff. Yep. So you can get a big wad of them at once and sort of squish them down and go put them exactly you, you where you You can want. gather them up, pick up a large one, drag it around. Uh, it's easy to make a good pile of them. That's great where it'll burn really good. Very good. From a health and safety standpoint, this is really superior to trying to use a chainsaw. You got the protection of the cab to, to keep the trees off of you as they're falling. And also, if you're like me and prone to getting poison oak, uh, you have a glass cage around you that's keeping that the poison oak oils off of you. Wow. Well, Bill, that was fun. Now, we swapped out a lot of equipment, but had we just gone straight through, we could have probably done that in what? 20, 30 minutes probably, if we'd have just worked at it and stayed with it. And with a chainsaw, what is that? Oh, two or three days, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A probably. lot of blood with those thorns. Yeah. Because we've, we've literally made a mountain of brush tops. That's right. Out of this. That's right. Well, it sort of puts it back the way it should be. You know, in areas where we've got a lot of houses and stuff, it becomes more and more dangerous to burn. And mechanical control and removal of woody species like this makes more sense. And I think we've done a good job here of reclaiming some pasture in an area where it needed it. Right. We've disturbed the soil somewhat, but the yeah. stumps are low enough to the ground, we'll be able to mow over them if we want to. And that'll grass back over, and by the end of the summer, you probably won't even know we've done that. Yeah, and you know, to get that pasture back, there's really no other way but a mechanical way at this point because the trees have gotten too large to really burn. Right. There's not enough fuel under them left. They're shading everything out. If you want to reclaim that pasture to turn this back to what it once was, which right. is tall grass prairie, that's what you got to do. Well, I love it. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you having us out and letting us play with all the toys here. So it's fun thank to play you, with sir. The toys. Enjoyed it very much. It thank is. You. Well, for more information on this or other episodes, go to landdoctors.com. And as always, hang around after the credits for a little land yet. Do you have an Oklahoma property that you'd like some help with or that you'd like to see on our show? Drop us a line at landdoctors.com or our Facebook page. You never know, you might get to show off your land doctoring skills. I need the Oklahoma wind to run open through my veins I need the Indian grass to cut right through These long and lonesome days homeward bound I'm homeward bound I hear a scissor tail calling me from the I hear the top water roar in the still of the day as the bass enjoy the feast homeward bound. I'm homeward bound. Whoa, whoa. I recognize that front porch light from a mile away. <laughs> How'd I go forward? That's that's pretty cool.
Resistance is futile. Ah ha! Woo! That took some gnawing there. Now I'm gonna pinch this baby off. Come on, look at you. Look at you go. That's, that's killer. That is killer armadillo. We're gonna get two at one swap. Let's see if it'll do two. Do a two for here. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Oh my goodness gracious. That's crazy. I got a whole tree in my hand. Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. A little bit of Kelly love for you. Come on. Oh, they don't call me Dr. Hurt for no reason at all. I got to have any one of those. Man, that's sweet. This program is sponsored in part by the Oklahoma Energy Resources Board. The OERB is voluntarily funded by Oklahoma's oil and natural gas producers and royalty owners, and their funds are being used for well site restoration and student education all across the state. Since 1993, the OERB has restored more than 13,000 orphaned and abandoned well sites at no cost to landowners or taxpayers, employing Oklahoma contractors all along the way. The OERB is proud to serve the state of Oklahoma. Where did those come from? Well, let me tell you. Great Plains Kubota, your Oklahoma Kubota dealer and proud sponsor of the Land Doctors. Kubota, for Earth, for life. This program is sponsored and produced by the Land Doctors Management Group. We all know that Oklahomans belong to the land, but even the best of us need a little help from time to time. If you've got a spot of land that you love, but would like to make it even better, we're here to help. Whether it's wildlife, water management, natural resources management, environmental cleanup, or even real estate development, these doctors are always on call. I love the smell of fresh dirt in the morning. It smells like victory. <laughs> <laughs>